Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk, sponsored by Northwest Camera Co. and produced by our good friends at Strange Trails Productions. I'm your host, Dominic Barbaro, Seattle-based DP and director, and today we are talking about something that I am very, very, very excited for. It is a camera that I've been waiting for Canon to come out with for a very long time, and it is finally here. The C500 Mark II. Let's see why it's so cool. Canon's always been known for their really well-performing DSLRs, and they've also been well-known for their really great documentary cameras, but they've never had an offering in the cinema market that everybody just wanted to gravitate towards. Until now, I think this C500 Mark II is gonna be very popular across all formats of shooting, and the spec list proves it. So specs, why is this thing so special? Well, first off, it's 6K full frame. It downscales to about 5.9K, and you can shoot in a Cinema Raw Lite, which is 12-bit or 10-bit, yes. at 6K, up to 60 frames a second, which is really fantastic, because this is the first time Canon hasn't crippled their uh, slow motion capabilities with lowering the resolution. Uh, you can also downscale to 4K from the full frame sensor and shoot XF ABC in 10-bit across a lot of different frame rates as well, which gives you a lot of flexibility if you don't want to shoot raw and you're just doing dock stuff, low, you know, turnaround. The XF ABC is not nearly as crazy as a codec as the Cinema Raw Lite. What else is new on this? CF Express. It's basically a faster read and write speed uh, to get all that raw data onto these cards quickly. You get about 30 minutes to an hour per 512 gigabytes, so if you're you know, on a shoot, just prepare for a lot of media if you wanna shoot in 6K raw. If you wanna shoot in 4K XF ABC with that full frame, you'll get a lot more run out of these cards than doing raw. Another cool thing about this camera is modularity. This is the first time Canon has really done something modular that works really, really well. For instance, this viewfinder just kind of pushes on and there's a couple screws, so if you want to take this off, if you're going to run on a gimbal so you're not hitting the tilt uh, on the back, just right off. Again, there's like a V-mount adapter that goes on the back that has some new ins and outs uh, that add on to what's currently on the camera. Also, the PL mount, you can remove, you can do PL, uh, you can do EF, I think there's a B4 possibly, and then hopefully an LPL coming. All those just make this camera so much more flexible. Another familiar thing is the button layout. This will be more or less the same as the C300 Mark II, but now everything lights up. You can Every button can be illuminated so you can see in the dark. Everything is very easy to get to. Navigation is very easy through the function button and the joystick uh, on the front or the top monitor. What's different from the C300 Mark II now is they've moved the XLRs are no longer on the monitor, they're on the side. So you've got two XLR ins, you've got AC in, you've got monitors in and out, uh, time code, mic and headphones, all of that's on the right side of camera. And it doesn't stick out too far or too far to the side, so you should still be fine on most gimbals uh, if you're running things into the IO on the side of the camera. Another really fantastic upgrade that they've done is the monitor. The monitor and the bracket for this camera is next level great. You know, for being something that is included as a stock piece of equipment, it is very functional. It's essentially three pieces that all articulate and move around, but you can break them down in three different ways and affix them to your cage, to your side, to the handle, pretty much anything you want. And that gives a lot of flexibility if you want to keep the standard monitor that comes with the camera to navigate through the camera as well. So I think Canon did a really good job designing this monitor because no matter how you have it oriented or what rig you have it built on, you'll always be able to maintain control of the camera through the standard monitor that comes with it, which is really nice. I think Canon did a really good job designing this monitor. The modularity and its functionality really makes you want to keep it on your rig the whole time instead of trading it out for something like a small HD or a different monitor. And I like that because I get to keep the functionality of running my camera through that monitor, which is really nice. Another thing I'm really excited about, the power draw on this camera. This is one of the new Core Nano batteries and it's got a built-in D-tap or USB so you can keep the standard battery and run something like a Teradek or a monitor. But one of these little batteries will power this camera while recording for almost two hours, which is really, really nice. To get something that long on a Alexa Mini or on a RED, you'd have like a 150 watt hour brick on the back, which is gonna add a ton of weight to your rig. Another really cool thing about this camera is it's low light. It doesn't technically have a dual native ISO function, but that being said, you shouldn't even be afraid to push this camera 
10,000, 12,000 ISO, even at 3,200 and 6,400, I was getting really clean images at night, you know, running around the city. And to me, that gives me a lot of confidence knowing that I can go into almost any situation because it's not that often I'm at an ISO value that high and really pick off some really good shots, you know, for doc or some small footprint narrative stuff. I think this is gonna be a really nice camera uh, to, you know, bring a lot of light into the sensor. All right, this new Canon C500 Mark II, it has all the specs, it has all the capability, it has the modularity. Seems like it has everything I want. I guess now we just need to go shoot something with it. And one lucky lotto ticket. Just so you know, I get 20% of your head. Yeah, right. Anyway, I don't know what's going on. For some reason, it just stopped working. I'll look at it, Tom. This light won't quit flickering. Yeah, you, you just need a new bulb. <sighs> all right, you're all set, man. She's good as new. And what about my light? I'll get to it tomorrow, Tom. Been up since seven, man. So have I. We've all done it, but it's... Hey. What? What do you mean, what? Well, you, you look like you want something. Oh, I was wondering if I could do one of my own songs tonight. No. Wow. You need a drink. Oh, I don't get high on my own supply. I think you were just talking about crack cocaine when you said that, not whatever's on tap. Well, these guys just want to hear you sing songs they know. Do it when there's someone left. Besides, we both don't buy 1AM. No one's gonna know the songs they know. I work for you. I work for them. How's it going? Long day. It's a karaoke tonight. Told you it's not karaoke if I'm the only one singing it. Get yourself a band and then we'll call it something else. It's karaoke. Hey, y'all. We're gonna do the usual, you know the drill. Put your requests in, but we're gonna start with an oldie, but a goodie. You've been long after you're gone. You know that I'm out of this world. Bobby, you wanna get up here? Someday, any day, never, not today, okay. Yo, green as grass, I'm blue, it's blue. No one's uh, requesting anything, so I'll just uh, throw a personal favorite in. Hey, uh, if anyone knows these lyrics, go ahead and shout them out. All right, yo, yo, five, six, and dance, and that's it. Uh, we're closing out. Yeah. So, um, thanks, thanks, y'all. Got no I ain't got no money, honey, but I work every day, make just enough to get by. That's just my way. I'd like to go some places, but I. Stay. 
Just as long as moving on costs what it does That machine, they say it works But not for people like us So on and on and on and on and on and on I run cause I ain't got no money, honey And I work every day I get sorry they sold me that bill of goods back of lies. I know it's their way. I ain't got no, 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 I ain't got no money, honey. And I know it's not just me. Don't pull that shit again. Okay. No, I'm serious. Okay. Stop smiling. Sorry. No, you're not. Go home, Daisy. Going. 1578. What? 1578. They're usually 1350 something. Inflation? I make like 13 an hour. Maybe you should quit smoking. Overall, working with the C500 Mark II was really enjoyable. I gotta say, having it be modular and light, and it, I mean, to power on it, we didn't have to hardly switch batteries on two cameras throughout the whole day, maybe like two or three times per camera. Our Steadicam camera may have only switched two batteries for the whole day. I mean, it just is really nice to have camera not go down for very long. The other thing is, Looking on the monitor, I feel like the only time I, I have felt as confident looking at just a 709 from a, a log on a production monitor was working with the Alexa sensor. It just, the C500 color looks so good and the 709 LUT is so good. It just feels confidence inspiring once you start seeing images on the monitor and that honestly is really, really fun. All right, so we're here with the C500 Mark II. The really cool thing about this camera is before it, we had the C200 and the C700. The C700 was 
a full frame camera, but it was a bit of a weighty uh, camera. It was much larger, much more expensive. Now we have the best of both worlds with this camera. It includes a lot of the anamorphic modes, those extra special things, as well as the nice raw footage and the portability of the Canon C200. One thing that was kind of a bummer that we didn't get to use on the short film was the anamorphic modes. Now we have a set of Atlas anamorphics at the shop and we really wanted to test them, but it just didn't fit into the narrative to try to do anamorphic and switching them back and forth would have just been too confusing uh, on set. So we ended up just kind of duplicating a slight anamorphic look during the karaoke scene with some streak filters. But the anamorphic is really, really nice and it meets all the Netflix requirements for resolution. So I think it's gonna be really nice to be able to shoot you know, your docs or your features or your commercial content on anamorphic of any kind really. And you can do anamorphic in Super 35 and full frame. So depending on which anamorphics you have, you're gonna get coverage on the sensor, which is really nice. So another huge selling point on this camera that we didn't actually get to use and we thought we were was the autofocus. Now when you're using native EF lenses that have autofocus capability, it is really, really good the way it'll detect faces and allow you to switch back and forth and uh, keep things all in focus via the autofocus uh, in the lens. So we did a lot of steady cam and we had some pretty complex blocking so we didn't feel like autofocus was gonna be in our best interest. So we ended up just pulling focus manually, uh, wirelessly on the camera with the steady cam. So we wanted to, we ran some tests in the shop while we were doing our prep, but ultimately it didn't fit the narrative. But I can definitely see times when, you know, you're doing an interview and people are moving back and forth or you're doing walk-in talks as a one-man band, that autofocus is gonna be really critical uh, to keep things sharp without having to spend most of your energy trying to, you know, play with focus. Instead, you can focus on framing and just like walking, uh, you know, appropriately. So um, if you're moving, that is. I feel like the C500 Mark II gives me a ton of confidence, not only with its like modularity and its codec options and its picture and, you know, frame size between full frame and super 35, its low light capabilities. I really do feel honestly like I could take this camera onto any type of job, whether it's corporate, a big movie, a big commercial, uh, you know, a music video and get everything that I would want out of it that I could get out of something like an Alexa Mini LF or a Sony Venice or a Red Monstro. I really do feel like this camera is in the caliber of other cameras that are just priced, you know, two, three, four times as much. So I really feel like Canon hit it out of the park with a spec wise camera for an affordable rate. I really think this is gonna be a super popular camera across all genres of filmmaking. In the past, Canon has typically had you know slower frame rates. You'd have to drop your resolution to get higher frame rates, and uh, this is the first time where they've actually like made a decent frame rate at their max resolution, which is really awesome. I only really had a couple negatives with this camera, and like while the monitor does articulate, move, and it is very flexible, sometimes trying to figure out how it pivots on this little three-way pivot system can sometimes take more time than just like moving a, you know, arm. But if you're really worried about that and it slows you down, you can just take the monitor off and put it on like a Noga arm and now you've got infinite flexibility with it and it's way easier to navigate. So it's both a pro and a con, the, the monitor, but uh, all in all, uh, I feel like that's really the only bad part about the overall layout. And there you have it, the C500 Mark II. Honestly, I think this thing performed better than I thought it was going to, and I was really thinking it could do a lot. So I think this gives me a lot of confidence that I can take this onto a big budget commercial, a narrative film, a TV show, pretty much anything, and get really solid imagery and have a good workflow on set. And what more can you ask for from a camera, especially for this price point? I think this directly competes with the Venice and the Mini LF, and that is wonderful, especially when it's a quarter of the cost. I think this is gonna be a really popular camera. And that brings us to the end of our episode. Please like and follow us on Instagram. Take that little mouse and go down here somewhere and subscribe to our channel. And also, if you like what we're doing here and wanna be a part of it, just send us a message. Until next time, 
See you later.